Hey guys, so a couple years back I posted a series of videos where I mapped out four components of what I was calling the ideal physical capacity. Where as long as if any of us were to meet the, the minimum effective dosage of strength, flexibility, endurance, and steadiness, balance, then that would give us wiggle room to take on the typical demands of our daily lives while still having the, the space to do things awkwardly, to do things in a manner that would prevent us from uh, being at risk of injury because we're barely able to take on those demands. So the idea is that you have a larger capacity than what the typical demands of your daily life is. And by having that, you're less likely to have problems arise. It won't prevent a car from hitting you when you cross the street. However, it's likely to prevent you throwing out your back when bending over or doing something prolonged or awkwardly or quickly. Now in this video, what I'm gonna go through is a fifth capacity component that in the last couple of years I've observed to be very necessary for any of us to take on these other four components both in general and to take on the regular work necessary to, to cultivate them, to maintain them, and also to be able to take on the demands of our daily lives, period. And that fifth capacity is calm. All right, so calm. Why am I speaking to that being the fifth component of capacity when it comes to being more resilient in the, the face of the physical demands of our daily lives? Well, yes, calm is more of a psychological process than anything else. It is the ability to either not express and most especially not experience any strong emotion, to not be overtaken by any strong emotion, and instead in order to have a sense of composure in the face of strain or demands. Now the reason that I am saying that calm is the fifth component is that although calm, yes, is a psychological state, a psychological process, it is practiced primarily physically. And the reason for this is one of the major ways in which we regulate our emotions is not by thinking our way through them, but instead through physical states. We can regulate our emotion most easily and most effectively by regulating our internal physiology via our breath. If you want to jack up your internal state, just simply jack up your breathing rate and especially take some big inhales. However, if you want to calm yourself, you need to take deep breaths and especially focus on a full exhale with a pause. And so it is by our breath in which we can most effectively regulate our emotions and practice a state of calm. Now this isn't anything revolutionary. This is something that has been talked about increasingly in the last decade, thank goodness. However, it's something that's been observed for thousands upon thousands of years to be effective. So this is really nothing new. And besides our breath, the other way in which we're able to practice calm is in our physical composure by being able to anchor our bodies into the ground and stay in relation to the ground, to be grounded. You cannot be grounded internally if you're not physically grounded yourself. And if you cannot feel your feet on the ground or your butt in the chair that you're sitting in, you certainly can't be grounded. And so what I'm recommending is that any of us take on not only the practice of being calm, but look at it as a physical process, not merely a psychological one. Now, it is one thing for me to say that we can regulate our, our internal state and practice being calm by our breath, as well as practicing grounding ourselves physically. And it's another thing to actually give a process in which, which to do those things. Well, besides actually practicing being aware of your breath, one thing that any of us need to be able to have access to is a rib cage that is flexible enough to expand. So if any of us have a very restricted rib cage, then when we do attempt to take a deep breath or to adjust our breathing rate, if our rib cage is not able to expand in all the ways that we need it to, or if it's only able to expand into certain shapes, 
then that is not going to aid us in the process of being calm. With that, if our body has a certain shape or tone to it that makes it very hard for us to steady ourselves, to anchor ourselves into the ground, whether we're standing, whether we're seated, or in a variety of all, of all different kinds of, of positions and movements that we're gonna need to take on in our daily lives, well, we certainly can't stay grounded now, can we? And so having a body that has a large physical capacity in its flexibility, in its strength, in its steadiness, and in its ability to endure, allows us to practice an effective deep breath and practice physically grounding and anchoring ourselves into the earth when we are practicing being calm. And with that, the ability to have access to calm allows us to pursue these other components as well. So calm is one of those things that likely we could see as a, as a glue that holds all the other four components together. However, we need access to those four components to effectively physically practice calm.